Hi and welcome back to the channel. It's winter. <laughs> it isn't actually. It's uh, the 1st of July and um, the winter's back. Anyway, I think you're all experiencing a bit of bad weather at the minute. This week, our video is all about dangerous vans, dangerous conversions. We'll just call it that. This is my mate's van. It's a lovely little van. I like it. Him and his wife really do like it. And they get a lot of enjoyment out of it. They spend quite a lot of time away in it. So let me just show you what it is first. So we have Ford Transit, all wheel drive, four by four, little mini adventure rig. Now, my friend really does get out in this. He does a lot of shooting. He does a lot of, uh, Time away with his missus in the van. They love it. Let me just show you inside. Ignore that, we'll get to that later. But it's finished really nicely. I like it. They love it. But it has a few issues. So when it first arrived at our house, my friend said, could you just have a quick look round it? Um, when we're running the night heater, we're getting a lot of fumes. So we had a little look and that's where everything started. So I'm gonna run you through each stage of what I've found. And basically, it's not good. There's a saying that I've become accustomed to saying recently, and that is, you don't know what you don't know. And the more I bother with vans and um, the more self-conversions that I see, that becomes apparent. There is a lot of people out there that don't know a lot of things. And uh, if I don't know something, I will go away, I'll look into it, I'll research it, and I will make an informed decision, or I will interpret the rules and regulations to what I believe is correct. But that's what I do for a living. So I... Uh, I spend that little bit extra time trying to learn and share that knowledge. And that's what this video is about. It is really to help you guys when you go to buy a van. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the inside, on the outside. It's what's on the inside that matters. Just like us. <laughs> this is a really good example of what to avoid. Um, I spoke to my mate. I've told him I'm making this video and he's happy for me to share this information because Again, he didn't know what he was buying. So let's just take you through the issues. So we've got a major issue with the uh, night heater. We've got a major issue with the gas supply. And we've got a major issue with the electrical installation. Um, and the lack of isolation. The, there's just... We'll get there, we'll get there. I'll go through that, I'll save that to last because it is probably one of the, the more concerning ones at this gas installation because this is amazing, absolutely amazing. There it is in all its glory. So that is a gas bottle, just held in with a strap. Flexible hose that runs from here all the way through the back of the van, all the way behind the water pump, all the way over the water tank, and down behind the kitchen unit. Firstly, that canister should be in a, in a sealed compartment with a dropout vent. Your supply hose should be made of copper and rigid in its construction. So from there, right through, needs replaced. This video is not about me rectifying this van. It's not about me doing any of that work. It's about the hazards that we've found in this van and going through them one by one. So, drop out vent. If this was to leak, if that connection was to fail or this was to fail, or it was to rub through at any point in the installation, there's nowhere for the gas to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that in a box for him. We are going to put the right connection, the right pipe 
all the way through the van and in that box we're going to have a dropout vent that will just vent straight out so if this leaks this gas is heavier than air it will run out and it'll just drain away and it will naturally disperse if that was to leak in there this environment here could well the whole van could become an explosive environment it's that simple if that was to ignite and catch fire how are you going to put it out how are you going to control it yeah and oh yeah let me show you it's right above where they're sleeping so let's not think about the consequences of that going wrong so that is a big job that's a job on its own to do new gas supply all the way in tank uh kind of stay inside a, a box a gas safe box and it'll also have a drop out vent let's talk about the diesel heater next um we've all fell in love with these diesel heaters they are a brilliant bit of kit when installed correctly so the the initial issue with this van was that when they put the night heater on they could smell fumes I'm going to show you why they could smell fumes but before we do that there's a couple of things that you should maybe consider as well that is the vent for the night heater the night heater is located down there now you can see other things but please just pay attention on this I will come to all this in a minute directly behind there is the end of the night heater that draws air in so you think about it currently it's drawn air in from a sealed area once that flaps up that locks all the front of that off there is no way for it to get fresh air other than to pull it through gaps and stuff like that it will take the easiest route possible right so this is the underside there's the exhaust coming from the night heater there's the air intake as well um, not the recirculating air intake that's inside but look at that gaping hole there. Let me see if I can get a bit of light on it for you. That is straight through into the cabin. If you look there, you can see the floor. And you can also see the bottom of the night heater. So there's no plate being added. There should be a plate, a shield, that goes on the bottom of there. Um, and actually comes through. But it's missing. So this is installed incorrectly as again. Um, we need to try and seal up as much of that as possible because that is a route into the cab via that hole for the gases. There's the end of the exhaust. What we are going to do as well is extend that exhaust away about another two, about another two feet and then we'll have it so it's up near the rear tyre. But yeah, what was happening was the gas was all accumulating in these areas here and then making its way back into the cab through there. So the minor fix put on it with that little extension to take the gas away. And it's, it's working for now, but they still are getting smells of fumes. And on inspection, that's the reason why that big gaping hole. Another issue as well. That's the exhaust for the night heater. And that's a window. So really you shouldn't be fitting things directly under the window that is probably out of let's back off it's probably you know far enough away not to be an issue but if you've got no wind the fumes are just going to come straight up straight through that window so now we're on to the bit that just i find absolutely amazing it's uh, probably one of the worst electrical installations I've ever seen ever I've seen some bad ones but this this one basically takes the biscuit box because that's what it's in right I'm going to show you the electrics now um, possibly the worst installation I've ever seen um, it literally takes a biscuit well actually it takes a biscuit box because that's what the electrics are in now <laughs> you might think i'm joking but you might have seen it in the video already they've put the electrics in a box that you lift out so the mppt is in there the 12 volt fuse boards in there so 
the van is in a lot of what we'll call a state of disassembly because I've I've been looking, I've been trying to work out where everything goes, what's go what's where, to be honest. I'm going to just take you through it now. So yeah, that there. Obviously the batteries are there. We need a job done on that to secure them. Under the seat, there is a voltage sensitive relay, which is charging the batteries. No isolation, nothing. The MPPT is there in the biscuit box. No isolation. So there's no way to work on that system without potentially short circuiting it, damaging your panels, whatever. I'm going to wait till much later on tonight and I'm going to take each one of them out while there's no solar about, while there's no power coming through and I'll tape them up and we will try and put them into some form of isolation. For now they'll be going in Wago connectors and I'll be marking it up what it is. But that there is the incomer. That is <laughs> that is a solar coming in. So they have used domestic wire and fair play to them. It is tri-rated cable, so it's flexible enough to be used in this installation. It's wire strands. So but nothing secure. So over time, them cables moving back and forward, it will shorten the life, you know. The reason we use tri-rated is because it is flexible and it does move and it, it handles vibration well, but you're still supposed to secure it to reduce how much vibration it experiences or goes under. This here, look under there, nothing is secure. We are meant to lift this box in and out. There is a lid for it somewhere, but I've taken it off because we are not leaving this installation like this anymore. So we're going to sort this out. But yeah, you've got an MPPT there. This is your cables coming in. They should be isolated as close to where they enter the van as possible because you know you need to you need to do you need to be able to isolate that if if you want to work on this system. When I measured it before, we had 25 volts coming in. 25 volts, DC, it's... It, yeah, it's just... <laughs> it's crazy to think that somebody's installed that and not installed a switch to turn it off. The switch they did install had a broken wire in it. It had been badly crimped. But look at this. I've used no tools today other than a screwdriver to open it up. Look at that, everything's loose. I can I can move that with my hand. You've just got to take my word for it. So the battery's not connected, but we're still getting power. Down to the board, you'll see this flashing every now and then. That's because the solar is back feeding all this as well. So we need to, we really need to do a job on all this, sort it all out and get it into some order. That is not what you should. If I turned up with a van and the electrics were like that or the cabling underneath, I'd just walk away because whoever's installed it hasn't got a clue. I'm being blunt and honest. That is dangerous. All of that insulation is dangerous. The cable's not being supported, it's dangerous. The battery's not being secured, dangerous. That is not readily accessible. If something was to go wrong, how do you stop it generating power? How do you stop it adding to the problem? You can't. Every piece of equipment that generates power should be able to be isolated. So your voltage sensitive relay, the engine's running, it's generating power. Something goes wrong here, you need to stop the power going in. You have stored energy in there. You should be able to isolate them batteries. There's no battery isolator. There is no isolation on the solar. The only isolator we've got there was broken. So, big lesson to be learned by a lot of van builders is, if you've got power coming in, you, you need somewhere to isolate it. And I know I might be preaching to the converted, but <laughs> no pun intended, the converters. But some people don't know this information. Some people are totally unaware, and it goes back to what I said at the beginning, 
You don't know what you don't know. But if you don't know something, you should be out there researching. The internet is a wonderful place and it is full of disinformation. So if you're wanting to understand how to how, how electric should be wired and how gas should be installed, I wouldn't be going on the forums. I'd be dropping on to um, industry regulated sites where the information should be available. Now, gas, when I put the gas in my van, I went on the HSC website and I looked for information in there. And from there, I managed to follow a trail down to get the information I required for the gas that I put in my van and the tests that I should be doing. And I performed all them tests and it passed. Three years in, we have never had a leak. We've never had an issue with the gas. I still test it every year and it passes. And if I work on the system, I test it again. But I give myself that knowledge by going out there and looking for the information, learning how to do it, speaking to engineers and saying, how do I perform this test? And you might remember my friend Andrew, he's a gas safe engineer. He talked me through it. And once he talked me through it, I was like, oh, that's great, I can do that, that's dead easy. And once you know this information, it stays with you. So you can work on the system, you can maintain it, you can alter it and amend it, but you're doing it safe in the knowledge that when you're finished, you can test it and make sure it's right, it's, it's correct. This van will be right when it leaves here. Um, we have got, got a gas safe box there. We've got drop our vents coming tomorrow. Oh, there's the lid. <laughs> Handily enough, he's wrote on what everything does, all the fuses. Pity it wasn't in a handy place to, to utilise that. But yeah, there's a lot of things. That cooker is not designed to be in a van. It's designed for outdoor use, for outdoor use only. They have got a vent in there. So I'll be showing them this sticker. I'll be showing them what I would, how I'd be using it. I would be opening that window, running that vent or having that door open while I use that. And I'd be turning it off every time I've used it. We're going to be moving all the electrics from underneath the cupboard and the oven to an accessible place, which is our accessible place is going to be behind the driver's seat. We're going to put a panel on here. We're going to move the MPPT up onto here. The fuse board will be here. And uh, the little earth buzz bar will be there as well. We're going to make all these connections a lot tidier. We're going to put an isolator down here for the DC to DC, it isn't a DC, it's a voltage sensitive relay. We will have an isolator here and we'll also have an isolator here for the solar, for this cable here. So we'll make, we'll make a little panel here, round about here, two isolators on it, and then he can turn them off whenever he likes. And then we'll have a battery isolator as well. So we'll probably have three isolators in one place. Um, just nice and handy something down here like I say MPPT fuse board and we're actually going to put a 230 hook up in for him we're going to sort out that night heater because obviously there's no vent into the van and the gas well the gas is straightforward that needs a full pipe all the way through right up to the back of that unit um, It's not my call, I'll, uh, I'll help him out as best I can, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't be using that, unless, unless it was ve well ventilated. Um, we just do what we can do. I'll sort out the electrics, I'll sort out the gas for them. Um, we'll sort out the night heater, because that is a death trap though. That is one of the worst installations I've ever seen. They've literally ragged a hole in the floor and screwed it onto the top of the wood. But again, I don't know how to get into that area. I'm going to have to do a little bit of investigation. It might be that we just move it from there and we find somewhere else for it. Might be the simplest option. I've showed you a few issues there. 
the gas, the night heater and the electrics. The lack of isolation um, being the main part, the poor installation being the second. Um, yeah, mech things. Don't make that there's terrible. <laughs> I don't know what was, the guy was thinking, but it's terrible. What we're going to do is we're going to make everything readily accessible. We are going to support them cables. We're going to put them in some uh, some nice conduit. Um, we're going to pass them towards the back so that area can be used for storage. We will dress up everything. We'll put a switch on the night heater control because at the end of the day, that night heater is on full all the time. Um, the only way you can control it is by pulling the fuse. So if you don't use this van for a while, that's just going to eat away at your batteries. Um, we're going to put some 230 sockets in here, a little fuse board and a battery charger. So when the winter months come, or if they want to go to the site, they can plug in and they can restock the batteries, replenish the batteries and have a couple of 230, uh, 230 outlets. But yeah, hopefully that's been beneficial. Um, like I said, this is a great little van. It's had a life before it was a camper. It's got all the scars to show it, but it's got a lot of character and I love it. They love it and, you know, they're happy with what they've got. They know there's a few issues on it, but when we're finished here, this van will be as safe as any other out there. And that's the, that's the whole crux of the matter for me. I want my friends to go away, enjoy this and come home. So, Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been beneficial and it's shed a bit of light onto what is actually going on out there. This isn't by far the only van I've seen like this. Um, I had a van here last year. A guy is, is building these vans and they're in a similar condition to this. And he's done 27 apparently. So he's making a lot of money, but he's endangering a lot of people's lives. A gas bottle under your bed is not a sensible option in anybody's eyes. It just takes a little leak and you've lost everything. Um, potentially could cause you harm as well. Anyway, don't want to be a dark cloud. This is all about having fun. So think on. If you ever get stuck and you need to ask a question, Drop on our Facebook group. There's lots of people on there that'll help you. Some well-seasoned van builders on there. Lots of information. And guess what? It's all free. It's a lovely community. Lots of good people on there. And uh, if you're a knobhead, we usually kick you out. So, well, we do kick you out. <laughs> but we haven't got any on there. So it's, uh, it's there. It's for everybody to use. And if you, if you want to jump on, jump in, say hello, show us your van. And... Uh, Ask away, ask any question you want. If you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing and uh, you think we might be doing some something that's good and you, you, you're you going to enjoy, why not click that subscribe button? Because it does matter to us. It helps us grow and develop as a channel. The more subscribers we get, keeps me motivated as well. Do you know what I mean? It really does keep me motivated. Seeing them subscription figures going up means I'm doing something right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing. Um, drop a comment. Let us know what you're doing. Let me know what you think of this little van. It is what it is, but when we're finished with it, it's going to be something special. And uh, it's got a lot of potential. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you again. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.